3, 2, 1, stop! Good evening, welcome to Countdown. It's stage four, the Tour's individual round. Today, the rolling group shot of the first three stages gives way to a series of solo close-ups as the contenders try to beat the clock and each other in the Tour's first individual time trial. Today's results will determine who leads the race into the mountains and who'll be forced to chase. Every year the tour organisers review the race just gone and tweak the parameters of the next one to produce what they hope will be the most interesting contest. This year they've cut the length of the time trial, perhaps trying to lessen its importance or at least keep the gaps as tight as possible between the contenders for overall victory heading into the Pyrenees. But the intentions of the organisers and the way the race actually develops always diverge sooner or later and for at least one of the favourites, Denis Menshoff, today is already a hugely important day. Let's take a look at who's standing where at the top coming into stage four here in Cholet. Well, last down the ramp in the leader's jersey after his breakaway exploits yesterday would be Romain Feu. The Frenchman will get the biggest cheer of the day, possibly a medal from Nicolas Sarkozy if he's still leading the race at the end of the day, which is unlikely. The real race begins a minute 45 behind him with Spain's Alejandro Valverde the best place of the favourites. But he's just a second ahead of Australia's Cadell Evans, who will be looking to take more than that out of his chief rival today. Then comes the contest for the leadership of the CSC Saxo Bank team. Luxembourg's Frank Schleck is on the same time as Evans, which puts him seven seconds ahead of his brother Andy and the Spaniard Carlos Sastre. There'll be no definitive result until the mountains, but today should at least produce some movement on the swingometer. Behind them, a couple of riders are already in trouble after just three stages of racing. Ricardo Rico of Italy and the third favourite for overall victory, the Russian leader of Rabobank, Denis Menshoff, caught up in yesterday's crash and already three quarters of a minute behind his main rivals. Let's take a look at the route then. It's a 29 kilometre circuit starting and finishing in Cholet. Two time checks out on the course, not particularly technical as time trial routes go and pretty much flat too. The wind is blowing intermittently though, so it could be something of a lottery as far as the conditions are concerned. So it's a big day for the overall favourites on the tour, but also for the time trial specialists, men like David Miller and the current king of the big time trial, Switzerland's Fabian Cancellara. And a specialised discipline takes specialised preparation. You put uh some good music on, pump you really the, the whole thing up and, and then, then you're self-motivated. Get up, go on the home trainer, faff around, go to start, ride around the course, talk to people, start time trial, go. Five, four, three, and when he say two, I stand up on my bike, and then for me it's ready, because then I take a big breathe, then he say two, one, here and go. Time trials are very kind of rider specific. Somebody like me is very punchy. I kind of have to be putting it in the red and like kind of letting it come back down again. I'm very kind of aggressive. I need a computer on my on my bike because when I see 53, I say okay, 53 is nice, but I have to go 54. When you have 54, you try to go 55. But then you have your sports director that he says in the blocks, come on, pick up the motorbike. And sometimes I say, hey, why I have to pick up the motorbike? They can't get around these corners as fast as he can, Phil. They don't realize how yes, fast this man is going. Every ride is different. We all have our ways of doing it. And so for me, it's that if I'm fit, I kind of, I tend to be sort of just high revving and resting and kind of just constantly putting just digging deep and then shutting off and, and it's, it's kind of unorthodox but that's the way I do it. I have a big big engine but sometimes it's not only the engine that makes a difference because without this you never will win races. 
Now, as ever in time trials, the riders set off in reverse order. So Fabian Cancellara is 34th from the end, David Miller 8th, and Chris Froome back in 168th position, one of the early starters. He came in with the second best time of the day, quickly swept away by the men who followed. Danny Pate of Garmin Chipotle with a time of 36.54 is the fastest finisher. As we join commentary with Mark Cavendish coming up the home straight. And here comes Mark Cavendish. Now, we didn't expect a great time trial out of Mark, although he won the opening prologue time trial of the Tour of Britain in London last year. But he's come home more or less poor, thinking of tomorrow after it didn't work out yesterday. He's a sprinter. Give us your verdict. How was it out there, Mark? Um, well, you know, it was uh, windy anyway, you know. It, was, it wasn't too bad on the way back, you know, tailwind, but it was up and down. There was nowhere to get really in your pace the whole course, so... For me, I don't, it's not it's not so much of a problem, but I think, you know, the GC guys that can't really time trial, I think it'll affect them a little bit. What about Dave? Do you think it's one for Dave, knowing the way he rides? Oh, for sure, you know, it's a strong guy. Cause he doesn't have to get in a rhythm, you know, he's so fluent that he can go up and down the, the bumps and in the crosswind so well, so hopefully Dave can, can get up for it. I spoke to him yesterday, he said he feels good, so, so yeah, I hope he can he can get up there. Saving yourself a little bit for the for the days to come, Mark, today? I definitely, you know, it's been hard the last two days. I had to had to try and get up there, and then you know the mountain stages to come. I'm going to have to go full gas just to get over them. So if I'm trying to take today as a rest day, then and it'll be better for me. Thanks, Mark. Okay. Here's the arrival of Chavanel, Paul, and this is going to be the one that Pate is watching. It looks as though it will be good enough as they rush up towards the finish here. The time trial champion of France again this year. He's only just won the title once more. He's seen the clock. He knows what he's got to do, and it's going to be a good time here. He has not uh, absolutely annihilated Pate by any manner of means, but he might just sneak this. It is a steady little climb up towards the finish, and that's a long way to. There's the time to beat of 36.54. Chavanel will get all of the French coming up here as they race towards the line now Sylvain Chavanel, it's going to be tight this one and he knows it because Pate has gone really well over this last two thirds of the course, he might just get it but it's going to be desperate 51, 52 he gets it by a shaving just over a second, well, well, well this crowd here is unbelievable as we joined it, Jens Voigt again the crowd is so vocal. If you get into a situation like this in the individual time trial, you can hardly hear. The noise is like going through a tunnel of noise, and that's exactly what Jens Voigt is doing. He's being egged on, he's being pushed on all the time, and you can see that reflected in the way he's riding his bike at the moment. The best time at the finish is still 36 minutes and 52 seconds, but I tell you what, the way this man Jens Voigt is going, I think he wants to take that. Well, this is interesting, Paul. We switched the last to Denny Menchoff here. He was second best time at the first check, looking for four seconds to overhaul Voigt. Now, has he managed to reverse that? Because the strong riders seem to be getting quicker once they're rid of that first headwind time check. Well, he's looking at the time here of Jens Voigt, and it's an important time trial, I think, for Denny Menchoff here this afternoon, Phil, because he lost himself 45 seconds yesterday, and he needs to try and pull back as much time as he can, not really on Jens Voigt, but really on guys like Alejandro Valverde and Cadell Evans, so he needs a good performance here this afternoon. I don't think he's going to beat the time of Jens Voigt at the second time check. In fact, he's gone behind it now at 19 and a half kilometres, but it's still a good reference that he is riding a good time trial. 36.52 is Chavanel, who is getting ready to walk away from the finishing line because presentation time is now moving towards the German here of Jens Voigt. He has ridden superbly throughout. He has looked fast, not just gone fast. He's really looked as though he's put his whole back into this. You can probably hear the crowd. He is one of the world's most popular riders. He gives you 100% and he's going to sit down now, Paul, with the best time and just see what everybody else can do. Just Check out that face on Jens Voigt. He really is a beast of a man, and he's going to fight that machine all the way up to the finish line, and he's going to stop the clock there, Phil, with a 33-second beating of the French national champion, Sylvain Chavanel, and now he can breathe a little sigh of relief because I tell you what, what a man he is. I, well, I think I just love the way he races. As we go back here to Denny Menchoff, now he's coming up to the finish line. It'll be interesting to see just exactly what his time is like, and it's not bad. 
Well, Menshov here is looking at the time of Jens Voigt, and that's the time to beat. Uh, he was six seconds down on him at the uh, second time check out on the course. He's looking to beat the 36-19 mark of Jens Voigt, and there you can have a look and see that he's got an awful long way to drag himself up to the finish line here, and it's uh, amazing how the television lens makes you think that you're right next door, and here he is in the final few metres. Well, Paul, he's got to do a great ride here. There's no two ways about it. He doesn't know what the other stars will do because he's behind them in the overall classification, so he's ahead of them in the time trial. Boy, he pulled out. How did he do that? He's got the best time. We are looking now at the start of Fabian Cancellara. A moment ago, on the other side of the crowd, on a different direction, the finish of Denny Menchov, who has done the best time. He reversed a little deficit, and that is a terrific ride by Menchov, and Cancellara probably doesn't know it because he was about to leave the start house. So Fabian Cancellara is off in pursuit of Denis Menchov's time. David Miller and all the overall race contenders are still to come. We'll take a break. Welcome back. You find me leaning against the caravan close to the finish line of today's time trial in Cholet. Back to the racing very shortly. But here's a very quick answer to a number of emails we've had into the program about this lot, about Team High Road and also about Team Slipstream. And why, given that they've got new sponsors, are they still known on all the official tour information, the official graphics as THR Team High Road and TSL Team Slipstream? Not exactly up to date, is it? I haven't got a clue, but I think I know a man who's got a bit more information than me. Matt, what's going on? What's, why aren't they up to date? It's Columbia, isn't it? And Garmin, not, 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 not their our old names. Do you know what, Ned? I've spoken to two commissaires this morning, and uh, I've said to them both, why this change? And they said, well, you know, the name has changed, but the abbreviation is the same. And I said, yeah, that's the question I'm asking. <laughs> and, they, and they said, well, uh, it's the UCI's fault. You register a team at the start of the year, and you stay with your abbreviation. I said, well, I mean, this obviously isn't a UCI event. And they said, ah. So I think that's the answer, bureaucracy. So we don't really know the answer, do we? <laughs> we don't really okay. know. <laughs> Thanks very much. First with non-answers. Back to the race. Here we go. This is what we want to see. The first time check for the world champion, Fabian Cancellari. He's aiming at 14.09. Uh, what? I can't. 14 11. Was that 14 11? I couldn't work it out. How it was working. It looked like 14 11, so he's down on at the moment. Only two seconds down it's on confirmed. Jens Voigt. And it's 14 11, and that's not surprising. He started off slowly, and I think we'll see him accelerate down towards the end. He's looking today to try and turn around a minute and 45, a minute and 46 seconds on the, some of the other riders in the race. Coming up to the line now, Jose Ivan Gutierrez, formerly the Spanish national time trial champion. It's a long drag up to the finish line here. He's not getting out of the saddle yet. He's using all of his power to try and see if he can stop that clock. He's looking at the time of Menchov. I'm certain now he's going to go outside of that time, so Menchov will still stay on the top step of the podium for the moment with still some of the big guns to come to the finish line. Gutierrez now is battling up to the line here in Cholet to try and stop that clock. It's an awful long drag up to the finish line isn't it as he goes over the line he's lost himself 15 seconds and he stopped the clock in third place this must be uh, Nibali coming in Paul yep it is he's still looking at the time of Menchov to beat it's a very good time for Vicente Nibali I don't think anybody's going to knock Menchov off just yet no. but I don't think that will change until we see the arrival of Fabian Cancellara but it's good to see this young man a new kid on the block putting in a fine time well, Nibali's time at the previous check is being challenged now by Lundqvist. He's to come into the finish as Nibali may be slowing down a little bit over this last half of the race. We expect, no, he's got a good ride. Third place, so he's come in with a third place finish there. That is very good. He displaces Gutierrez, the Spanish time trial expert. That was a very, very strong ride indeed, I think, over the last few kilometres. A little bit uh, further back, this is Stefan Schumacher. And uh, Stefan Schumacher is one of the great stars of German cycling. And he, in fact, if you remember, was the man who tried to create the surprise on the first day, jumping away on the climb up to Plumelec. And he now is underway for 29 and a half kilometers. And we go back to the upside down world of riding number 13, the world time trial champion. Last year, he won five time trials. They were just about the best time trials in the world. The national championship the prologue time trial in London of the Tour de France around Buckingham Palace and the world title were three of those five victories for him. 
Look at that crowd, it really is unbelievable. They've turned out to witness this race here this afternoon. Damiano Kuniger. Now, this is not a bad ride for Kuniger because his Achilles heel in the sport of professional cycling is the individual time trial. He's rocking and rolling a little bit, the top half of his body, but still, he's going to stop the clock inside, I think, of the top ten, and for him, uh, I don't think that is too bad a performance. There you go, tenth for Damiano Kuniger. Lost himself 47 seconds, and uh, that isn't too bad at all. So this is Fabian Cancellara now coming up to the second time check at 19 and a half kilometres. The time he's looking to beat is that of his own teammate Jens Voigt. And I tell you what, he's having a hard time matching his own teammate Jens Voigt because in fact he's just gone outside the time of the German. Now that is a massive surprise. We saw Jens Voigt going around this course and he looked like a man possessed. He was battling with his machine. Cancellara has lost himself about six seconds at that point. He's gone through in third best time behind Menshoff and behind his own teammate Jens Voigt. As we go back down to the start house now, Andy Schleck all smiles. He made his debut in the Tour of Italy last year, shocked everybody by finishing in second place. The final countdown for Andy Schleck, brother of Frank. First Tour de France, the two brothers have been together. First Tour de France of any kind for Andy here. That second place in the Tour of Italy last year and best rookie then. We've got all of the big names to come. Valverde, Kim Kirken, David Miller, Cadell Evans. It's a, it's a who's who of cycling in the last 30 minutes. Carlos Sastra here being drawn up the hill. He's 14 to 29 seconds at that first check. We're waiting for any furtherance on that, but he's receiving all the applause is here these are the days these boys who live in the mountains hate they don't like races of truth they'd rather challenge the mountains and beat them George Hincapie can ride a very good time trial when he wants to he's been normally the lieutenant of Lance Armstrong Lance has gone now George is still here and riding for himself back to the finish here comes Damiano Cunigo Damiano Cunigo looking to put himself as solidly into the top 15 or 20 in the overall stand at the Tour de France here this afternoon and for a man who is better reputed to be one of the big climbers in the sport he actually hasn't done a bad individual time trial here this afternoon I think at the end of the day he can go away from this 29 kilometer test as a satisfied man I think you can almost see on his face here that he is very happy with that eighth place as he hits the line in 37 10 for a man in contention yes he most certainly is right now the world champion coming home here it's not been a walkover it may even not be a best time Menchoff has pulled out something very, very special. I think Fabian, though, has used that big plate on the front of his bike, and he's not going to have that. He's seen the clock up the road. He is sprinting for the line. Look at his face here. Fabian Cancellar has got 16 seconds to get to that line. It is still an awful long way, but he's desperate now. Has he reversed the deficit of seven seconds at the last check into victory? He's sprinting here like it's the end of a mass start road race. Three seconds, two seconds. He's done it. Goodness me he has done it best time 0.88 of a second he came across the that line was there. he was oh. looking at the clock fill across the finishing line I could see him chaining his gear up he was getting the turbo he was looking for fourth gear fifth gear sixth gear on that racing machine of his and there's confirmation there's still a lot of big names to come though as Cancellara stops the clock one second faster than Denny Menshoff two seconds wow. faster than his own teammate but this man number 111 Stefan Schumacher has just recorded the new New fastest time at 11 kilometers 15 seconds faster than Jens Voigt well I mean I'm 17 seconds faster of Cancellara at the first check but Cancellara obviously had planned a fast finish there but Stefan Schumacher is the next big news on the road but he still has a little way to go so Fabian Cancellara is leading this time trial by the skin of his skin suit. David Miller is warming up on the rollers though. He'll be starting after the break. So will Cadel Evans and Alejandro Valverde. This is Carlos Sastra. He's looking at uh, around about a top 20 stop there and Ooh, 15. 15th place as Carlos Sastra comes over the line there. That is a good result for another climber. Not quite as good as Cunigo, but keeps them both in the hunt for the final yellow jersey two and a half weeks away. We rejoin here uh, Andy Schleck, the brother of Frank, the man who finished second in the Giro d'Italia last year at the first attempt, now trying for his first Tour de France. It's a long time since Charlie Gaulle won the Tour de France for Luxembourg.
Well, he's uh, lost a fair bit of time now. This is the next this test is check. This the interesting one, Paul. One. For Schumacher, this is very interesting to see. He's looking at the time of Jens Voigt. He was 15 seconds faster than Jens Voigt at the first time check, and I think he's going to go even faster here because this is a little bit of a surprise for me, the performance of Stefan Schumacher here this afternoon, but can he finish it off over the final 10 kilometres? He's puffing and blowing there as he comes up to the line. Well, as he comes through here, he's still got plenty of time in hand, and I would say that he is still going through with the fastest time. At the 19.5 kilometre check, this is a big surprise. 24.42. If he holds that to the finish, Cancellara will leave the tour. I'm only joking. <laughs> I don't think he'll leave the tour, but he will be very surprised indeed. You can see the pain and anguish on the face there, though, of the man who wears number 111 for Team Gerald Steiner. And this is the provisional result of the second checkpoint Schumacher 23 seconds ahead of Voigt 29 seconds ahead of Menshov and uh, 20 30 seconds ahead of van der Velde and Cancellara well that's pretty impressive for George Hincapie going inside of Jens Voigt there but still missing out on 14 seconds from Stefan Schumacher but it just goes to show the big George is on form and now we go to the start house here is Cadell Evans in the start house ready to go this is his rendezvous the first big rendezvous for the Australian in the Tour de France he's a great individual time trialist let's not forget that last year he won himself for the individual time trial at the tour and here he knows how important it is he's been quiet for three days he's been riding at the front end of the main field and he's now got to come out and show just exactly what he's got he's been beaten this year by Alejandro Valverde in two individual time trials won both of those in the Dauphiné Libre but this is different this is not the Dauphiné Libéré, this is the Tour de France. And the reason it's the Tour de France is why all of these people have turned out here, and as you can see, the riders, and that's Andy Schleck making his way through the crowd. We now have David Miller in the start house here for Garmin Chipotle, the new American team he joined this year. He wears the colours of the British champion he rolls. He knows he's got the ability. He won a few years ago when the race finished in Nantes here in dreadful storm. I say here, it's where we were yesterday, about 35 miles away from where we are today, and conditions are better. Miller knows that Cancellara has done the time which sits best, 36.17. He knows that Stefan Schumacher has gone through the last check before the finish 30 seconds quicker than Cancellara. Now it's down to him. We have got some big names out on the course now as Christian van der Velde comes up to the finishing line. He's looking to challenge the time of Fabian Cancellara and this is going to be very close. The look at this, Paul van der Velde. This is a huge effort. How has he come back from that finish? We know he's got a high one. He's made it in fourth and just a scan. It'll be five whole seconds down. George Hincapie. Big George went through the first time check with the second best time, but 14 seconds adrift of, of course, Stefan Schumacher. Well, this is amazing. I don't know how to describe this because he's pulled this one out of the pan. Cancellara will be desperately surprised at this ride. This has been a great ride by Stefan Schumacher. It is going to annihilate the time of the world champion and I think might lead the way to the best ever victory of his life, but we won't know that for a while. As he comes up to the line, he's looking at the clock. I just hope the timekeeper's got this one right. He's won by 33 seconds. No, I'll correct that. Best time by 33 seconds. <laughs> best time at the moment by 33 seconds and look at this man's face here as he looks at the line he doesn't even sprint he knows he has to keep the pressure going all of the time and that is a phenomenal new best time by Stefan Schumacher but however George Hincapie is not doing too badly out on the road either because Hincapie comes up to the second time check and he's looking at the time of Denny Menchoff here a time of 25-11 George is an experienced campaigner nowadays Phil and he will know exactly what he has to do over the last 10 kilometers of this race well, he has slowed on this second sector, Paul, because he was right up behind Schumacher at 14 seconds. He slowed down into sixth place there, George Hincapie. So he started, he used all his strength into that win, but as the, the race gets a bit easier course-wise, he seems to be not having quite the top-end speed. Schumacher has the best time in 35 minutes and 44 seconds. The next man to climb into the starting gate is Kim Kirken, and he starts five riders from the end, and he rolls away. He's wearing the green jersey as the leader of the sprint competition. Schleck brothers, and he's going to do a solid performance, I think, for a man. Let's not forget, first Tour de France for him. He's looking possibly going inside the top 20.
This is a good ride for a man still growing up in the professional world. His second in the Giro d'Italia last year was a big surprise, but it was well earned. And now he's starting his first Tour de France, 15th as he crosses the line. Romain Fellu of France leaves as the last man in the all-yellow strip as leader of the Tour de France. He's not going to win this race, but he rode his heart out yesterday. He laid claim to lead the Tour, and in France, that is some achievement. Well, just listen to the crowd as he moved away there. They were cheering on their new hero. He's hoping to put on the mantle of Thomas Buckley. Hickapi has done a good ride, but it's not good enough for the top spot. No, George has steadily slipped away, but he held on to that six at the last check and he's crossed the line in six that's a very very good ride from George Hincapi team Colombia will take that one from George this in fact is Alejandro Valverde and David Miller has just gone through the first time check there with the second best time at 13 seconds behind Stefan Schumacher a uh, second ahead of George Hincapi and a second two seconds ahead of Jens Voigt here's confirmation of that that David Miller has gone through that time with the second best time Welcome back. Germany's Stefan Schumacher is the surprise leader of the Stage 4 time trial. Kim Kirken and David Miller, though, have gone through the first checkpoint, second and third. David Miller still within sight of a possible yellow jersey at the end of the stage. Cadell Evans, though, over 20 seconds down on Schumacher's time after 11 kilometres. This will be the second check for Cadell Evans. Remember, he's not too worried about Schumacher's time. He's more worried about Valverde riding behind him as to what he will do. And he'll be concerned about Menchov's fine finishing time as well. There's the second place time at this point, held by Voigt. Dropping away a little bit now. Evans goes through. Brilliant. He's gone through in the third best time. He's improving because he just displaced Menchov. We're looking at Valverde here. As he goes through, he has only done the 30th best time, I don't believe this, at 48 seconds. Now, if Cadell hears that, he's going to go like a rabbit. Well, just look here at David Miller as he races fourth to the 19.5 check here. Schumacher's time amazing at 24.42. Miller is getting close to him. Maybe he's picking up here because they have been coaching him along the road to cheer him on and telling him what he's doing. It might be having an effect. He's certainly riding as well as I've ever seen David Miller ride a time trial as he comes up towards the second check at the moment. We're looking here now. What will he do at the line? Miller is now looking to get a measure of 25.05, and there he's gone through. Second best time. He's lost himself 14 seconds on Stefan Schumacher, but he is improving. Here's our young man here, 24 years of age, the leader of the Tour de France, and he's going to do a ride if he can. He won't match the, the times that are being done today by the big riders in the time trial, and the big rider seems to be Stefan Schumacher at the moment, still leading. Miller was the last rider through, and he's lost a further two seconds. He's now 15 seconds behind Schumacher. This uh, is indicating the big disappointment today. Alejandro Valverde won the first day, made a mistake perhaps yesterday. He wanted to be last man off in yellow. He's not responded yet to the conditions. Like everybody else, he's been round the course this morning to check it out. He knows what's around every corner. But that face to me, Paul, says today it is not all coming out. Well, we're just looking at this young man too, uh, 15.45 I think is the time gap there for Roman Felu, and he too now, Phil, has lost himself a whole chunk of time and maybe all of the time that he made up yesterday, 1.48, he's behind the time of Stefan Schumacher, so theoretically right now he's actually lost his yellow jersey. It didn't take long to do that, did it? But even so, who is going to take it now? Cancellara is in the lineup. A David Miller is closing in. A Schumacher is there. This is going to be a very interesting twist of fortunes here on what is turning out to be, as we always felt it would be, a very special Tour de France. The crowd of Brittany and now down here in Cholet are cheering the riders on. They're looking at Alejandro Valverde. Meanwhile, at the second check, Kim Kirken coming up. And this might be another big surprise here. Kirken was through. 
through in second best time in the first check. He was looking for 11 seconds to get up alongside, uh, but he's already gone behind Schumacher now. He's looking at David Miller's time. Well, do you remember the disastrous individual time trial he had in the Tour of Switzerland? Well, he's turned that around here at the Tour de France because he's only 10 seconds down on Stefan Schumacher at the second time check there. He is riding a storming time trial here this afternoon, and he now is facing up to the last 10 Ks. Back out on the road, this is David Miller. He is burying himself here. He's right in the podium, finishes third at the second check. Uh, but the riders are closing in around him. Well, Miller has got to also do a very quick addition of points here on the running down towards the finish line, Phil, because he started the day with a seven-second advantage over Stefan Schumacher, and that could be very critical when it comes down to the end. He needs to finish inside of that mar margin behind Stefan Schumacher if he doesn't finish in front of him. And it's all about whether or not that massive big gear that he's turning is going to turn out to his advantage. Three kilometres to go, that should really be about three minutes and 20 seconds. He's riding, though, to a very high overnight position in the Tour de France. At the one kilometre to go is Cadell Evans, just 0.6 of a mile. And Cadell Evans has been moving up all of the way here. There's his time at the moment. He's 35 minutes on the clock outside here, so he's closing in quickly. He's sitting in fifth at the second check, 24 seconds behind Schumacher. But more importantly, time in hand over his rivals. As we look here at Valverde heading in, for the second check and Paul we are counting down so fast that is not a good time as our directors here in France swing us to the finish for the arrival of Pazzato. Well Pippo Pazzato crossing the line a serious finish for him 33rd but the next man to come up to the finish line will be Cadell Evans as we look at Valverde I'll tell you what Valverde has actually improved Phil over the second part of this course he was a long way yes. down to begin with but he's now moved up to 18th place but the time he's lost is a minute at this point he's moved up 12 places though as Cadell Evans comes in to the finish here Cancellara is the second best time that is what Evans is aiming at now and remember Cancellara is the world champion Cadell Evans is back in this Tour de France if he was ever out of it because now he's got the second best time that is a terrific result for Evans well Cadell Evans has done a phenomenal performance there he was a long way down and he's actually improved at every individual time check and that is a sign of a man who knows exactly how to ride an individual time trial as we look back now at Alejandro Valverde the result at the finish line for the moment Stefan Schumacher 27 seconds ahead of Cadell Evans and a little bit more ahead of course of Fabian Cancellara as we go back to the finish line this is David Miller looking to see whether he can get himself the victory of the stage and the possibility of a yellow jersey as well he's dreaming of it he's inside that finishing line now he's looking at 35 44 he's trying to get himself he's going to go outside the time of Schumacher well this is a super finish by Miller but it's going to slot in a probably in a second place finish here should be a good one for David he'll have a high overall position tonight he's ridden his best time trial for many many years here Miller and he's taken it to the line, second best time at the moment for David Miller. The important thing to note there is the 18-second deficit that he's got there, Phil, on Stefan Schumacher, which means that for the moment, if we stop the race, Stefan Schumacher must surely be the man in the yellow jersey. Dave, second as it stands. Well, I'm very happy, but... Well, yeah, I'm pleased. Yeah. Strong, just as strong as you thought you might be. How this man is battling in the yellow jersey, he's pulling himself inside out to try and do pride to the yellow jersey, but it's proving to be just a little bit too heavy here this afternoon. Well, Felu is making his way up to the second time check at 19 and a half kilometers. He is 149th of the 178 riders at that point. Just over three minutes and 17 seconds slower than Schumacher. This is the interesting time. The arrival of the Green Points jersey lead here, Kim Kirken. And on many people's lips, a favourite to win the Tour de France too. His team have got great encouragement here for him because they believe he could win the Tour de France. Well, he's getting out of the saddle now and coming up to the line. And what a time to get our little technical problem. He stops the clock oh. there, Phil. He's lost 18 seconds on Stefan Schumacher and he's come across the line in 
second place. And for me, the quick addition now would put the yellow jersey onto the shoulders of Stefan Schumacher at the end of the day. But for Kim Kirken, it's a serious blow because he's moved himself up into second place and he's telling Cadell Evans, watch out, mate, because I'm here to race this tour. Well, uh, he really is suffering to get up this finishing straight and it seems interminable to this man who wore the yellow jersey for the first three days of the Tour de France this year and now he's trying to get himself to the finish line. Well, it's gone outside of the 37-minute time and it's going to be closer, Phil, to 37 minutes and 20 seconds. Now, that will be a little bit of a shock to his system. He's got to get his mind back into this race. Well, the mountains are just around the corner now. 23rd position, 37 minutes and 18 seconds for Alessandro Valverde. Verde. So Cadell Evans has made quite a gain on him today because he did 36-11. He's gained one minute and seven seconds on Valverde. And that's a big gain for Cadell Evans today. Here he comes now, the long road to the finish as the crowd cheered him home. Well, in fairness of the three riders, uh, he is the slowest of those last three men as he slips away towards the end of the classification. It's a long time since we've seen that happen in, uh, to a yellow jersey in a Tour de France, but I have to tell you, this is not a normal Tour de France. This is going to be a most interesting race here. Uh, the only real uh, favourite to excel today appears to be Cadell Evans. Kim Kirken we put in the second rank of favourites, and he has actually done very, very well. And for Team Colombia, he's set them up now for a great ride. There he is, he's home. And he's just five minutes slower than the winner today. And there is the winner. No one's pre-race tip, it has to be said, but Stefan Schumacher rode the time trial of his life to take the best win of his career. There's the result, 18 seconds between Schumacher and Luxembourg's Kim Kirken, who's having a good tour so far himself, with David Miller in third by fractions of a second. Cadell Evans will be very happy with fifth, considering where some of his rivals finished. Dennis Menshoff had a good ride too after his poor start to the Tour, he was sixth. And although the stage favourite, Fabian Cancellara, only managed fifth, perhaps he should be happy to have finished at all, given how close this careless fan came to knocking him off, approaching the first checkpoint. Further back, Damiano Cunigo was 17th, and Alejandro Valverde 23rd, 1 minute 34 behind the winner, and more importantly, 107 behind Cadell Evans. First blood to the Australian in what was really the first stage of the tour as far as he was concerned. Yeah, in my mind for classification, really, yeah, this is the, really the first appointment for the GC favourites, I think. And um, you know, like I said, so far so good. And um, let's see in Super Best, I think, will be the next uh, real showing for the GC riders. Top of the GC, the general classification for the moment, though, is Stefan Schumacher. Although these days on the tour, any surprise win raises eyebrows, and a look at Schumacher's resume does nothing to bring them back down. He's had to explain himself to the doping authorities on more than one occasion, although his explanations have been accepted. His latest scrape came in January, when the police tested him for driving drunk and found amphetamines in his bloodstream. Ned asked him about it. Many congratulations, Stefan. I have to ask you, you professional riders are under the microscope these days, and um, it is knowledge that in January you tested positive for amphetamines. Can you tell us how that came about and, uh, and what the consequences of that were for you? I was not tested positive. I was, uh, it was a police control where they find some uh, micro uh, stuff in my blood. I came out of a disco. I did a really stupid mistake. I was drunken and uh, it was a, a longer story, but I... I went into the car and I'm a personality uh, yeah you do say, it's uh, big it's big news when something like that happens no, I, yes. I, I was not, not really proud of that because it was stupid to, to go into the car drive again when you have when you are drunken and that was that was uh, yeah not, not so intelligent I'm really sorry for that but yeah it was not sport it was a private story and uh, I will never drive drunken again so, that were, just to clear it up, there were no amphetamines? No, <laughs> it was in police control and uh, it was not a doping test, so I don't know what you, what you want to... What, what the police control tested you positive for? That's, that's what I'd like to know. It was only a little, little bit of uh, substance of, 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 of those, those stuff, but it was a police control. I come out of a disco and I, I didn't uh, consume this, 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 this kind of uh, drugs. Well, not entirely clear, although the presumption of innocence, the benefit of the doubt and the fact that he's not speaking his native language should all carry some weight. Then again, the presumption of innocence has all but disappeared in cycling these days. In any event, we thought you should know. 
Back to current certainties then and a look at the top of the standings. Schumacher leads by 12 seconds from Kim Kirchen and David Miller. Cadell Evans is up into fourth ahead of Fabian Cancellara, Christian van der Velde, George Hincapi and Thomas Lovequist who all had good rides today. As did Dennis Menshoff, he's 11th, 1 minute 12 seconds back. Alejandro Valverde is at a minute 27 and eyeing the mountains. Of the three CSC riders, Andy Schleck had the best showing today and Romain Fayou is back down to 41st after his day in yellow. All right, that's just about it for today. We're going to look ahead to stage five just as soon as... We've raced 599 kilometres of the 3,559 so far. The next 232 are from here in Cholet to Chateau Roux, Swansea to Chester to give you some idea. It's the longest stage of the tour, in fact, stage five, and it's the last chance really for the sprinters to grab a stage win before the tour heads for a mountain top finish at Superbess on Thursday. We'll have highlights of that for you tomorrow at 7 on ITV4. Don't forget the whole stage will be available on the red button if you've got Sky Satellite or Virgin Cable. And to tide you over until then, there's always the website, itv.com forward slash tour, for emails and the podcast. Well, Alejandro Valverde looked good for the cameras on day one, winning the tour's opening stage and taking the first yellow jersey. But Cad L. Evans has won the first battle between them that really matters. They'll be going at it again on the climb up to Superbess on stage six. Tomorrow, they'll be hiding in the bunch. And at the front of the bunch, if he can get his escort organised, could well be Mark Cavendish. It's a chance for David Miller too. He's just a handy break away from taking the yellow jersey. It's all hotting up nicely on the tour. We'll see you tomorrow. Welcome to Countdown, it's stage four, the Tour's individual round. Today the rolling group shot of the first three stages gives way to a series of solo close-ups as the contenders try to beat the clock and each other in the Tour's first individual time trial. Today's results will determine who leads the race into the mountains and who'll be forced to chase. Every year the tour organisers review the race just gone and tweak the parameters of the next one to produce what they hope will be the most interesting contest. This year they've cut the length of the time trial, perhaps trying to lessen its importance or at least keep the gaps as tight as possible between the contenders for overall victory heading into the Pyrenees. But the intentions of the organisers and the way the race actually develops always diverge sooner or later and for at least one of the favourites, Dennis Menshoff, today is already a hugely important day. Let's take a look Look at who's standing where at the top, coming into stage four here in Cholet. Well, last down the ramp in the leader's jersey after his breakaway exploits yesterday would be Romain Fayou. The Frenchman will get the biggest cheer of the day, possibly a medal from Nicolas Sarkozy if he's still leading the race at the end of the day, which is unlikely. The real race begins a minute 45 behind him with Spain's Alejandro Valverde, the best place of the favourites. But he's just a second ahead of Australia's Cadell Evans, who will be looking to take more than that out of his chief rival today. Then comes the contest for the leadership of the CSC Saxo Bank team. Luxembourg's Frank Schleck is on the same time as Evans, which puts him seven seconds ahead of his brother Andy and the Spaniard Carlos Sastre. There'll be no definitive result until the mountains, but today should at least produce some movement on the swingometer. Behind them, a couple of riders are already in trouble after just three stages of racing. Ricardo Rico of Italy and the third favourite for overall victory, the Russian leader of Rabobank, Denis Menshoff, caught up in yesterday's crash and already three quarters of a minute behind his main rivals. Let's take a look at the route then. It's a 29 kilometre circuit starting and finishing in Cholet. Two time checks out on the course, not particularly technical as time trial routes go and pretty much flat too. The wind is blowing intermittently though, so it could be something of a lottery as far as the conditions are concerned. 
So it's a big day for the overall favourites on the tour, but also for the time trial specialists, men like David Miller and the current king of the big time trial, Switzerland's Fabian Cancellara. And a specialised discipline takes specialised preparation. You put uh, some good music on, pump you really the, the whole thing up, and, and then, then you're self-motivated. Get up, go on the home trainer, faff around, go to start, ride around the course, talk to people, start time trial, go. Five, four, three, and when he say two, I stand up on my bike, and then for me it's ready. Because then I take a big breathe, then he say two, one, zero, and go. Time trials are very kind of rider specific. Somebody like me is very punchy. I kind of have to be putting it in the red and then kind of letting it come back down again. I'm very kind of aggressive. I need a computer on my on my bike because when I see 53, I say okay, 53 is nice, but I have to go 54. When you have 54, you try to go 55. But then you have your sports director that he says in the blocks, come on, pick up the motorbike. And sometimes I say, hey, why I have to pick up the motorbike? They can't get around these corners as fast as he can, Phil. They don't realize how fast this man is going. Every ride is different. We all have our ways of doing it. And so for me, it's that if I'm fit, I kind of, I tend to be sort of just high revving and resting and kind of just constantly putting, just digging deep and then shutting off. And, and it's, it's kind of unorthodox, but that's the way I do it. I have a big, big engine, but sometimes it's not only the engine that makes a difference because without this, you never will win races. Now, as ever in time trials, the riders set off in reverse order. So Fabian Cancellara is 34th from the end, David Miller 8th, and Chris Froome back in 168th position, one of the early starters. He came in with the second best time of the day, quickly swept away by the men who followed. Danny Pate of Garmin Chipotle with a time of 36.54 is the fastest finisher. As we join commentary with Mark Cavendish coming up the home straight. And here comes Mark Cavendish. Now, we didn't expect a great time trial out of Mark, although he won the opening prologue time trial of the Tour of Britain in London last year. But he's come home more or less poor, thinking of tomorrow after it didn't work out yesterday. He's a sprinter. Give us your verdict. How was it out there, Mark? Um, well, you know, it was uh, windy anyway, you know. It, was, it wasn't too bad on the way back, you know, tailwind, but it was up and down. There was nowhere to get really in your pace the whole course, so... For me, I don't, it's not it's not so much of a problem, but I think, you know, the GC guys that can't really time trail, I think it'll affect them a little bit. What about Dave? Do you think it's one for Dave, knowing the way he rides? Oh, for sure, you know, it's a strong guy. Cut. He doesn't have to get in the rhythm, you know, he's so fluent that he can go up and down the, the bumps and in the crosswind so well, so hopefully Dave can, can get up for us. I spoke to him yesterday, he said he feels good, so, so yeah, I hope he can he can get up there. Saving yourself a little bit for the, for the days to come, Mark, today? I definitely, you know, it's been hard the last two days. I've had to, had to try and get up there and then, you know, the mountain stages to come, I'm going to have to go full gas just to get over them. So if I'm trying to take today as a rest day, then and it'll be better for me. Thanks, Mark. OK. Here's the arrival of Chavanel, Paul, and this is going to be the one that Pate is watching. It looks as though it will be good enough as they rush up towards the finish here. The time trial champion of France again this year. He's only just won the title once more. He's seen the clock. He knows what he's got to do, and it's going to be a good time here. He has not uh, absolutely annihilated Pate by any manner of means, but he might just sneak this. It is a steady little climb up towards the finish, and that's a long way to.